Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And illumine your church. give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set lights in the sky to govern night and day, in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. You led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, for you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures we give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Please pray with me now, Psalm 141. I call to you, Lord, come quickly to me. Hear me when I call to you. May my, pr- may my prayer be set before you like incense. May the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not let my heart be drawn to what is evil so that I take part in wicked deeds along with those who are evildoers. Do not let me eat their delicacies. Let a righteous man strike me, that is a kindness. Let him rebuke me, that is oil on my head. My head will not refuse it. For my prayer will will still be against the deeds of evildoers. Their rulers will be thrown down from the cliffs, and the wicked will learn that my words were well spoken. 
They will say, as one plows and breaks up the earth, so our bones have been scattered at the mouth of the grave. But my eyes are fixed on you, sovereign Lord. In you I take refuge. Do not give me over to death. Keep me safe from the trap set by evildoers, from the snares they have laid for me. Let the wicked fall into their own nets, which I pass by in safety. Our reading this evening is from the prophet Habakkuk, verse, chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets, so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Here ends the reading. The devotion that I have chosen on this reading <clears throat> was written by an author by the name of Elisa Morgan. Just outside my kitchen window, a robin built her nest under the eaves of our patio roof. I, lo I loved watching her tuck grasses into a safe spot and then hunker down to incubate the eggs. Each morning I checked her progress, but each morning there was nothing. Robin eggs take two weeks to hatch. Such impatience isn't new for me. I've always strained against the work of waiting, especially in prayer. My husband and I waited nearly five years to adopt our first child. Decades ago, author Catherine Marshall wrote, prayers like eggs don't hatch as soon as we lay them. The prophet Habakkuk wrestled with waiting and prayer. Frustrated at God's silence with Babylon's brutal mistreatment of the southern kingdom of Judah, Habakkuk commits to, quote, stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts, to, quote, look to see what he will say to me. That was verse 1. God replies that Habakkuk is to wait for the appointed time in verse 3, and directs Habakkuk to write down the revelations so the word can be spread as soon as it's given. That was verse 2. What God doesn't mention is that the appointed time when Babylon falls is six decades away, creating a long gap between promise and fulfillment. Like eggs, prayers often don't hatch immediately, but rather incubate in God's overarching purposes for our world and our lives. And the reason I chose this reading and this reflection on the reading is that I feel like this fits right in with our study that we're doing of the book of Job over the first half of the summer. And I was able to speak to Job chapter 38 when after 37 chapters, God finally answers Job. The patience that it had to take Job to finally hear from God. I know all along throughout the book of Job, Job, we hear from Job, we hear from his wife and his friends, but God is silent until chapter 38 of a book that's only 42 chapters long. And I mentioned in my sermon on that that this is reminiscent of so many times when God has promised and yet taken so long to fulfill that promise. I used to think the patience was waiting the five minutes for food at a fast food restaurant, but I feel that now the times that we're in, we're really understanding what patience is about. And yet that's exactly what we're called to do, to know that if we are patient, God will respond. And so brothers and sisters, my prayer for you this evening is that even those days when it may feel like we are caught in something that's never changing, God is still in control and that we are to put our trust in God. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. 
My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Brothers and sisters, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, for all who offer here their worship and praise, for our own houses that are serving also as places of worship and praise in these times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the health of the creation, especially during these times of pandemic, for abundant harvest that all may share, and for peaceful times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public servants, for the government and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and in every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, and for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all servants of your church, for this assembly, and for all who are praying with us at this time, for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. At this time, I ask you to call to mind your own prayers, your own needs and petitions that all together we may pray with each other. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest, 
rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you through Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. Let us pray. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you this day and forevermore in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.